you. Oh, I still got your partner here, your partner in crime. Still got two. I was, uh, I wore this shirt, <clears throat> and then Dan's got one on about like it, and uh, so I was trying to copy him. <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, it reminded me, you know, uh, we was down at Brother Jerry's house, uh, and. Uh, what happens at our house stays at our house. No, this ain't gonna stay. <laughs> <laughs> we went down there, and there, little grandson and uh, when we went in there he's looking at me you know he just stared at me and I you know talking to him and he said uh, finally looked at me and he said what's in your belly <laughs> isn't that what he said <laughs> so I went home and going to throw that shirt away. <laughs> June looked at me and said, won't do no good. <laughs> uh, so I tried to wear this one, and I like this type. I'd had my coat, I'd had it on. I'd I, I start wearing coats to cover up this bubble here. <laughs> Oh, me. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate both Steve. I appreciate this church uh, for putting this on and the hard work you do. Uh, I thank God for grace believers. Amen. And uh, I do. I, Bro, Steve said I never got the Baptist out of me. Uh, you know, I never got over being saved. Uh, it's something about what the Lord done for me. Uh, grace to me is that he knew how I would be. He knew how I was going to be. He knew the beginning of my life and the end of my life and he saved me anyway. Now that's grace to me. And I thank God for what he's done. And I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians in uh, chapter four, it's a great chapter. We use this chapter a lot. Uh, we use it in verse three, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And uh, I want to talk to you about some things uh, just for a few minutes, okay? Uh, he's got his sign up there, I'm sure. But anyway, I want to talk to you about things that I think we ought to stand for and never compromise on. Uh, you know, when it comes to non-essential things, I want to be charitable. Uh, I think it was Brother Steve that said we could all sit down and we could share our views and probably we would n none of us uh, agree 100%, just different things than I do. But when it comes to some essential facts in this Bible, uh, some things that we should never, ever bend we should never give no ground, ask no ground. It's dogmatical, just right down the line. Uh, so I want to talk to you about that. I want you to notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and notice in verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, Brother Robbie talked about, and I appreciate Robbie, uh, the life of Christ living in us. And I want you to notice he said that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That's physical there. Uh, he said that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Now I can look at you tonight and you can look at me and there's no way you could tell whether Jesus Christ is in me or I could tell whether Jesus Christ is in you. I remember whenever I was uh, lost and I was very religious. I was raised in a, a, a church that we went three times a week. We'd have revivals five nights a week. 
uh, and I was raised son of a deacon, uh, and both of them taught Sunday school, and on and on. And so, but I was lost, but yet I went down, I was drug out of the uh, pew uh, one Sunday morning. A preacher walked down the aisle, and I'm standing back there, 16 years old, and he's pulling on my arm. And he said, you, you saved? And I said, no, sir. And I very, my very words was, if I die now, I'd go to hell. And he just literally, just I mean, you know, it's sort of like pulling me on tiptoes here. I didn't want to go. But then I looked up and saw my mama. And my mama's, you, you know, when they say heads bowed and eyes closed, that's, that, you just seeing who's honest who ain't. My mama's sitting there doing like this. And so she's looking at me and I'm thinking, what in the world am I going to do if I go home and I don't do what the preacher says? What am I going to say? So down the aisle I go and they gather around me. This is a big fish here and they all around me, the deacons and the men and the whole altar fills up. They're praying for me. And I'm listening to it. I get up and I say, boy, I feel better. You say, yeah, buddy, I feel better. You know what it was? I felt good because I did what they wanted me to do. But I was lost. And I got to doubt. I got to pray it. One of the preachers talked about saying the sinner's prayer. I had Romans 10 down memorized, man. You can ask Jude, I'd get down in the bedroom back there, open the Bible, read, or go down the Roman road. I had it about wore out. And I'd say, now, Lord, if I'm lost, I want to be saved. It always is. And so one night in a hotel room, the Lord did save me. When I come to the end of myself, but the story point I'm making, I had multitude. I went to a preacher's house once a week, every week for two years. And I told him I'm lost. I feel like I'm lost. You need to have more faith. I remember one time he took me in there and told me to read Hebrews 11. I read Hebrews 11. Build your faith. You need to pray more. And I don't know the people that come up to me and said, well, Brian, I know you're saved because I see Jesus on you. Now, folks, I've never seen Jesus on anybody. But here, the life of Jesus is manifest in our flesh. How? Go on with me. He said, so then, verse 12, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. His life, spiritual life. Verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Do you know how Christ is manifest? How that life is manifest through our flesh? By the words that come out of your mouth. Uh, look with me at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew 12, 34. And they'd already... Uh, told him that they cast out devils by Beelzebub. And look what he says to this crowd there. Uh, he said in verse 34, old generation of vipers. Now, how'd you like to be standing there? You're talking about a preacher. The Lord never backed down. He never, he never cut, he told it like it was. He said, they're old generation of vipers. How can ye be being evil, speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the tre a good treasure of, of the heart bringeth forth good things. 
And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now I like verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now he goes on, he talks about Noah, and look back in verse 33. He said, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Well, what's the fruit in the context is what comes out of people's mouths. It's words. And so Paul, back in the text, he said, verse 13, we have the, having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And folks, it's out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said, we speak. It's what's ever in your heart. And people can know what's in your heart by the, your conversation that you have. Now, I want to give you some things here. And notice this thing. And I think about uh, what we do preach. But I want to give you four things. Number one, what we should never, ever give up. No matter how much pressure is being put on and the world is changing, we're living in perilous times now. We're living in times where men will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. People today do not want sound doctrine. They want storytellers. They want false doctrine. They want prosperity. They want a God that'll pay their bills, that'll give them a fine home and give them a Cadillac to drive and on and on. And that's the world we're living in today and the pressure's on grace people. And when I say grace people, I'm talking about the body of Christ because everybody that's in the body of Christ is there by the grace of Almighty God. And there's nobody getting saved outside of his grace. Now, I want you to see something. Number one, that Jesus Christ is the Savior of this world. It's, he's not Allah. He's not Buddha. He's not uh, all these Hindus, Brahma, all these other gods. There is one God, and that one God is Jesus Christ. And it's getting a uh, shame and disgrace that people can say God, but they can't tell you who the God is, and that God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the Savior of the world. And brother, I want you to look in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now, I'm still... I'm in the Old Testament. I just, I'm in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Old Testament there. You know, they are Old Testament books. You didn't know that, didn't you? Uh, I mean, so anyway, John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, to Thomas, I am the way. I like that. I am. Do you remember what God told Moses in the burning bush? I am sent you. Do you remember in the garden of Gethsemane when they come out with a sign and they said, and he said, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of that. And he said, I am. You know what happened when he said that? The Bible said it just drove them backwards. As a fulfillment of Psalms, they drove them backward. That's God Almighty in the flesh there. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Jesus Christ is the only Savior this world will ever have. And you say, well, you're a little dogmatic about it. Yes, I am. And then people can get put the pressure on, and I look for it to come. I look for the day when they'll try to get that arrest. That's the spirit of Antichrist that John talked about that's going to be in the tribulation period. 
I mean, we can't, we get in where we can't offend nobody. Well, there is offense to this cross. And when you preach this cross and you preach Jesus Christ, it's meant to offend people. It's meant to show people that they're a sinner. It's meant to show people that they need a savior, that there's none good. You can't save yourself. You can't get good enough to God for God to accept you. What are you going to offer to a holy, righteous God? What are you going to say to him that will cause him to say, come on in. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Nothing. There is no other way except the way of the cross and that way is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I'm glad the Lord got me before the Baptist finished me off. (laughs) That's right. Lord have mercy. I've been in some wild services. I was, me and Steve was in one wild service up here in about 73. It got wild that night. But I was in one one time and, and the preacher got up there to preach and he slung a song book. I mean, he actually picked, had the song book and he went like that out into the congregation. Guess who it was headed for? Me and Steve, June was down. <laughs> There wasn't but one whole head sticking up at that time and I didn't have much room to go anywhere. And I went like that. He said, praise God. Nobody, see there, God, the Holy Ghost guided that book. And I thought, yeah. My, me guided my head away from that book. (laughs) Things like that. That's what people want. It entertains them. And churches are compete with one another. And they got to entertain to keep them there. And entertain to get them there. And the word of God, the Bible, Jesus Christ being preached is just a non-existence. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He said, I am the way. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Have you ever came to him for salvation? Now, I'm not talking about walking an aisle. I'm talking about just turning your salvation over to him. That's appealing to him. It's sort of like Paul when he was standing there and they said, will you go up to Jerusalem and be uh, hear your accusers and all that? And he said, I stand before Caesars where all to be tried. He said, I appeal to to Caesar. You know what he's saying? I'm turning my case over to him. Do you know that word appeal is translated in Romans 10? Call. Isn't that funny how the Holy Spirit translated different words, different places? Paul wasn't calling, getting down and saying, oh Caesar. He just said, I Heal my case to him. When did you, as a sinner, going to hell, nothing you can do, appeal and trust the Lord? Amen. Number two, the gospel of Christ is the power of God and the salvation. That's something we should never ever, and men today are changing their attitude about the gospel of Christ. Where is the gospel of Christ? Right there. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Folks, I want to tell you, there's only one gospel that'll bring you to salvation, uh, one gospel that'll save you, and that gospel is that Christ died for all of your sins and was buried, and God raised him the third day for your justification. You want to know the truth. People want to pervert that. Look in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. 
And I thank God that and most, most everybody that I, I know know about that. I was talking to a young man the other day, the other week, and he, I looked at him and I said, do you believe that Jesus Christ died for all your sins? And that he was put in the grave and God done away with the sin and raised his son up the third day for your justification? I said, do you believe that? He looked me dead in the eye and he said, no. Nope. I said, why? He said, you get that out of a Bible that you call a Bible, which is a book that men wrote, and that's just men's ideas and thoughts. And I said, you don't believe that God done it? No. I said, do you believe George Washington was the first president? He said, yeah, absolutely. I said, have you ever seen George? <laughs> I said, except on a dollar bill, but I said, how can you be sure that that's George on that dollar? Finally, he said, well, history books, history. I said, you believe that George Washington was the first president and you getting it out of books that man wrote and you swear by it, but you can't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? He looked at me and he said, I'm not going to win this argument, am I? And I said, no. <laughs> no, you're not. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we're living in a, there's a blanket-like covering over this world. And it's a demoniac spirit. And it's a spirit of the Antichrist. It's a spirit of error. And in the trib, they're going to deny that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. They're going to deny that he even came in the flesh. And like they're doing today, and I want you to know, Jesus Christ is God that went to a cross. And that good news is that he did die for all of your sins. Your sins is not your problem if you're lost. It's your unbelief. The problem of sin is took care of by the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation. Galatians chapter one, he says there in verse six, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And I have a little different take on that. I, I think Paul's the one that preached and called them and I think that they removed away from Paul the one that preached the gospel to them unto another gospel and many people today are turning from the gospel of Christ the good news that Christ died for our sins and he said in verse seven, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And that word pervert there is translated in Acts 2.20 as turn. They turn it, they twist it, they add to it, they take away from it. They'll tell you that Christ went to the cross and he died for your sins and was buried and God raised him from the dead. Now repent of your sins and turn from them and God will save you. That's not the gospel of Christ. When you add to the gospel, you're destroying the gospel. The gospel of Christ in its simplicity. And folks, there's a lot of preaching of another Jesus, another spirit out there, and another gospel out there. It's no good news to me if I have to keep the law. People want to keep the law. The golden rule. That's not good news to me. Not drive, driving in traffic like I drove in up, come up here. No, no, no. But I didn't drive in traffic much, but I helped Abby drive in the back seat. <laughs> we went by and picked her up and she drove. So, and I was in the back seat and I was just looking and saying, what idiots is out here? Good gracious. I mean, just on and on. And I'm sitting there, you know, uh, 
I, I, a lot of times people say, boy, if they could see you now. <laughs> yeah. They want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Number three, we are never compromise on. We should never compromise that Jesus is the Savior. We should never compromise the gospel of Christ. Never add to it, take from it. It is what it is. Believe it and God will give you life. Number three, we should never deny the book that it is God Almighty's word. That Bible you have right there is the only thing you can put in your hands and say it is the words of Almighty God. I believe that with all my heart. I had a man tell me, he said, do you believe those that are in the talents is the words of God? <laughs> <laughs> Why, sure I do. I believe that God Almighty overseed this book. I believe that the ones the translators filled in I often wonder why they put them in italics. I believe they are the words of Almighty God. I believe the Holy Spirit held them to put one. And then he looked, he said, well, said, uh, Brother Sipes <laughs> said, I believe it's the word of God if in spots. <laughs> said, I think there's some spots is not the word of God. And I said, Brother so-and-so, I don't know where the spots are, so I take it all. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just crazy stuff. Folks, this is God's word. Uh, the brother read it. The words of the Lord are pure words. You can take it to the bank. This is God. The only Bible God uses is this King James Bible. Folks, it's, it's, people say, well, uh, NIV, the ASV, they're just better translations. No, they're not. They're not coming from the same Greek text. They're not coming from the same text. They're coming from West Cotton Hort. They're coming out of them. They're coming out of manuscripts that's found in caves and, and trash cans in a monastery somewhere. That's why they were doing it in the trash cans. It ain't good for nothing. And on and on and on. Anything to keep people from believing this Bible. This is God's word. This is the precious words of Almighty God. The words of God appear and they make up the word of God. And Peter called Paul the scriptures. I had one to tell me. He said, now, now 1 Corinthians 15 cannot be to you. I said, what do you mean it cannot be to me? He said, well, Jesus Christ didn't die for you according to the scriptures. Cause I said, yes, he did. He said, well, you, you can't. I said, yes, he did. He died for me according to the scriptures. I said, he said, no, no, no. He said, you wasn't a part of the scriptures. I said, I understand that, but he died for me according to the scriptures. He said, what scriptures are you talking about? I said, Paul's. Did Paul say that he died for me? Did Paul give us the gospel of Christ? Amen. Then is Paul scriptures? Well, bless God, he died for me according to the scriptures. I don't, people want to get it so nitpicking. I mean, folks, listen. Like, where did the body start? Well, I believe it started with Paul on the road to Damascus. One guy said, well, I believe it started in Acts 13. What difference does it make? We're in 2016. Bless God, it's here. <laughs> Whether we know where it started or not, it's here. I don't really give... That car down there, I could care less where it started forming. All I know is it's here and I'm going to get in it and it's going to take me home. I hope. <laughs> you know how it goes. Then God's word book, I believe we ought to stand. And the last thing I want to mention, there's one way to study this book. And that's rightly divided. And we do it not to be smart. It'll make you smart. 
He said, knowledge puffeth up. And sometimes when you begin to study and you learn and stuff that other people knows, all of a sudden, if you're not careful, hmm, well, I'll show them. And you get the big head. That's not the reason you study this Bible. You study this Bible and you rightly divide this Bible so that you can have the right message to preach to people. So that you can have the right gospel to give to people. Folks, there are these four things I believe we should never, ever be swayed on. As a man in our church, he left. Been with us 40 years. His wife passed away. He married another woman. And now they're going to a church. They have their big time music. Lights are flashing like a nightclub. I've seen on the video and taking them down in a cow trough. Looks like what my daddy used, a big old tin tub like thing, baptizing little children. Just how can that happen? Paul said, In the latter times, many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Folks, I want to tell you where them spirits are. They're in the preachers. They're behind the pulpits. They're in the men that's preaching the false gospels. And they're in the men that's trying to tear down and make you doubt the word of God. And they're out there to get you. And if you don't think the, Lord, the devil will take you captive, you better think again. You know what he says, why are you there? Look over in Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six. Look what he says there in talking in Galatians chapter six. Verse one, he said, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. And boy, that's, that's a big word there. When you go back to 1 Corinthians, you find that G Paul says, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. He didn't say comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. He said comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And he says, for the natural man, and there is a natural man, there is a spiritual man, and the spiritual man desires the spiritual things. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Considering thyself. Look over with me in Timothy. Notice in 2 Timothy. Or Let me get there first. I might have told you wrong here. I know it's in one of them. Look what he says here. Notice what he's talking about in Timothy. Uh, come with me. To, there it is, 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about a words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers. To subvert is to turn upside down. Learn is to overthrow, is to corrupt people. We're talking people that saved can be corrupted. They can be turned upside down. They could be made shipwrecked by listening to false doctrine and being swayed and being pulled in there. Paul said to avoid things like that. He goes on, he said in verse there, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But what did he do? He said, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And godliness with contentment is great gain, and godliness has to do with that mystery of godliness. 
It's what you have in Christ. It's what you are. Your identity in Christ. We walk in the Spirit. We're in the body of Christ. A new man. But look on. He said, their word will eat as doeth a canker. It's like gangrene. It just keeps destroying and eating. And you have to cut a limb off or it's going to get in there and it just eats away. And he said, who concerning the truth have erred? Or uh, the word we use do with a canker, verse 17, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrowed the faith of some. Folks, they, they, they were preaching a doctrine and it overthrowed the faith of some. They wasn't preaching that there wasn't no resurrection. They just misplaced it. They didn't do what verse 15 said. They wasn't rightly dividing the word of truth. And he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure and having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Aren't you glad he can never say, I never knew you? You know, the moment you trust him and what he did on that cross, the moment you rely upon that, the gospel, the good news, and he died for you, for your sins, all of your sins, and was buried. And, and that word buried there, I mean, we use the first time it's used. and It's in Genesis over there. And Abraham said, let me bury my dead out of my sight. God Almighty took the old man that you are. He took your sins and Jesus Christ died on that cross and God buried it out of his sight and he raised him the third day for your justification as a surety that the sacrifice was made. I'm glad, Lord, you're my Savior. What else could I, how could I beat that? One way to study is to rightly divide. But looking before we was reading, I'm going to close. Verse 25. He said, in meekness, not with a high hand, not with a haughty attitude, not with a I'm better than somebody else. But he said, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves if God preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves. You will never recover them. They have to do it themselves. He said that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And folks, and finally in chapter four, Paul said, preach what? The word, verse two. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke with all, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come. I don't think it will come. I think it's here. I think it's right the day that we're living in, that time, right now, that time due to, I think it's now that men and people today, and I'm talking a lot, the people that suffer, has trusted Christ, maybe they're sucked into that spider web that Satan is weaved for them, and they're caught captive in there because they didn't want to endure sound doctrine. But he said there, in the saddest words, he said, therefore the time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Over in Titus, just a page in chapter one, he said in verse nine, holding fast. You ought to embrace this book, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. 
Verse chapter two, verse one, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That sound there is wholesome, it's healthy, it's safe, it's sound, it's secure. That's what men need today. I have them to tell me, you preach too much doctrine. Bless God, that's all there is. That's what the Bible is, a doctrine. Who wants to hear my speculations and my ideas? Paul said, preach the word. And he said, we preach Christ and him crucified. Folks, don't ever, ever give up on this book. Don't ever change your mind about the gospel of Christ because that's how you got saved. Don't ever forget that Jesus Christ is the savior of this world and the only one. Don't let people corrupt you. Rightly divide this Bible. Make the distinctions that God makes in this Bible. Peter and Paul are distinct. They have a ministry. Both of them had a revelation. Matthew 16, Jesus said, my father which is in heaven hath revealed that unto you. And that was his profession that he was the Christ, the son of almighty God. And upon this rock I'll build my church. And folks, that was on a revelation of Peter. Peter's foundation for the church that Jesus built, that he was the Messiah, the Christ, the son of almighty God that's not Paul's foundation he had a revelation and his foundation was Jesus Christ also but it was that Christ died for all your sins and was buried and God raised him the third day can't beat that grandma snuff wouldn't be that good thank you brother Steve